Hi everyone and welcome to another piano review here at Miriam Pianos. Today we're finally taking a look at Kawai's MP7 SE. Yes, I realize we're a little late to the game. This instrument has been out for three years, I believe. I honestly thought we'd already done it. And then somebody pointed out that we had not. Uh, and my experience with the instrument had been uh, largely positive. And so I thought, well, it's not too late. And there's probably quite a few people out there looking at stage pianos wondering if the MP7 SE is still relevant in today's market. So we're going to answer that question as well. We're going to look through the action, all of the sounds available, its core functionality, deliver that to you. you can make the call for yourself. If it's the first time that you found us here on YouTube uh, with Miriam Pianos, we would really encourage you uh, to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. If not now, then at some point in the video when you're like, yeah, this video is useful. We enjoyed it um, because we'd love to see you back for more videos. It helps us here on the channel. And it's just invigorating to know that people out there are getting some value out of these videos. So without further ado, let's get started right away with Kawai's MP7 SE. So like most instruments, we're gonna dive in with the sound first. Uh, now, this piano uh, is equipped with several of Kawai's uh, just beautiful sample sets, acoustic piano sample sets. And I've heard this instrument described as a very pianistic focused uh, instrument. I'm not sure that I would say that it's like focused at the piano to the detriment of all of its other functions, but they definitely have loaded this up with some really beautiful acoustic piano patches. They've got the SKEX, they've got the SK5, they've got the EX, um, and all of those are uh, in their full, uh, you know, um, uh, harmonic imaging uh, engine, and it's all the latest versions of it. So the SKEX is this very colorful, dynamic grand piano, and it's sampled off their latest nine foot uh, that they're producing uh, now for uh, probably in excess of 10 years uh, out of Japan. And then they've also got the EX, which is a little more loud, a little more bold and brashy, it kind of has a bit of a, a Yamaha character to it, or, or at times in a bit of a Hamburg Steinway uh, type character to it as well. Uh, then the SK5, which is about a six foot seven grand, so more of a studio uh, you know, sound all just wonderful and rendered really nicely through here. Now, it's a stage piano, so there's no onboard speakers. So we're giving you just direct line out. And this is what all of those sounds sound like. So here's the SK Concert Grand played through the MP7 SE. That's the SK Concert Grand. Then we've got uh, three different versions of that, which I, I have a feeling are just essentially EQ'd and maybe some multi-band uh, compression going on. So this is SK Studio Grand. And then we've got SK Melograd.
SK Milligrand. And then finally, Standard Grand. I don't know, whatever that is. So that is what you get out of the SK. Then we move on to the EX, and then we've got four variations of the EX as well. So this is the EX Concert Grand. Studio Grand. Mellow Grand, same thing. Jazz Grand. So there are four versions of each of the SK and the EX. If we continue moving on, then we get into our SK5. Much more intimate sound. Yeah, that's nice. And then we've got the studio grain, same type of modulation or um, you know affectation on this set. There's your mellow and very nice, big, bold, brashy sound.
So lots and lots. Lots and lots to like with all those grand options. As soon as you move past there, now you're into some upright potentials, and then you're into uh, some more basic, probably less usable, um, a little bit filler. Pop piano. Yeah, I mean, when you've got the SK, the EX, and the SK5 at your fingertips, I mean, literally at your fingertips, uh, why you would ever go into those other options, uh, I'm not sure, but they're there, and I suppose there are a few specific playing scenarios where you're trying to mimic a more vintage digital um, acoustic, a digitized acoustic piano, where some of those sounds might really come in handy. Um, the E pianos uh, from Kawhi have already always been uh, quite strong. So we've got many of those in there. Yeah. And so you continue to work through all of your EP sounds. Now the other thing this has on it is it's got a pretty good drawbar simulator. The stock, so I've got two kind of complaints here. One is that the stock drawbar sound isn't quite the right tone, or it is my preferred tone. I'd be going in there and looking for something that's a little throatier. Um, but uh, what it does have is it does have a full uh, tone wheel simulator, and you can use the mixer bars uh, to affect that. So this plays off the same type of thing that the RD2000 does. Now the advantage of the RD2000, this has got nine sliders. Here it's got four, so you have to sort of mix and match between uh, some on-screen controls and the sliders to be able to really customize the full breadth of all of those um, drawbars. But it's possible, and it's not that hard to access. Uh, if you, uh, essentially all you're gonna do is if you're on the sound mode and you're selecting drawbar, um, it already has uh, the switches, uh, the assignable switches are pre-assigned, so the switch two pulls up your drawbar menu. And it's right there, and it's nice and visual, so you can play around with this stuff. Now, and it's also got all of the percussion stuff. And it's got si uh, the uh, assignable switch one to the rotary speaker, you know, fast or slow. This is actually a really great setup uh, for organ. Um, 
just as intuitive. In fact, some of this stuff is even more intuitive than what I have on the organ settings for the RD2000. It's really well conceived of given that they're using a fairly efficient number of uh, buttons. It's not a particularly overwhelming uh, control environment or control surface here on the MP7SE. So we've got some big check boxes on the quality of the acoustic piano tone. We've got some nice, fat, usable uh, road stuff uh, through all of the e-piano stuff. And then the drawbar engine is really solid. Probably one of the better ones out there that I have seen on something that's supposed to be an all-rounder. You know, not something that is a organ uh, specific or organ specialized instrument. Uh, once we get into strings, vocals, brass winds, pad synth, um, uh, to me this is all sort of just... Functional. Gets into the functional range. Now, I mean, you're never going to be using this for an exposed string line on some track. It's always going to be a pad type of thing. So for that purpose, you're totally fine. There's no issue there. I also think the leads are pretty fat. The ability to edit those leads may be somewhat limited. Uh, you don't really have access to the sort of the synthesizing um, aspects of that tone, um, but it is a nice sample. So in terms of the onboard sounds, and there are 256, we've definitely got some strengths uh, focused on uh, your keyboard instruments, I guess that's no surprise. We've got a little bit of filler stuff, but still functional stuff through the strings, vocal, brass, woodwind, and then uh, some very nice uh, fat usable synth lines and synth pads as well. Now getting into the setup of how you can further manipulate and layer all of those sounds that's on the MP3, or MP3, MP7 SE, I should say. Uh, this is where you're going to start to access your zones uh, and your setups. And so, uh, you know, every company uses its own uh, lingo and own language to describe certain, um, uh, you know, dynamics or, or modes uh, on the instrument. Um, setup mode, uh, you know, personally, when I see the word setup, I'm always thinking edit, menus, that kind of thing. In this case, when you see the word setup on the Kawaii, this is actually what they mean when you're talking about multi-layered, uh, you know, combinations that you can save. So it's almost more like a scene or, or, or like a, uh, a combination sound. They use the word setup to describe this. And they're also organized and populated by category. And it's about half of the slots available are pre-populated and then the other half are uh, kind of left blank for you to come up with your own. So you can get into, you know, piano focused setups. Um, which add a little bit of a string sound in there.
yeah, some really nice uh, combination sounds. Um, same thing with the EPs. Wow, that puts you in place. Uh, so on and so forth. So as you go through all the setups, you get uh, these pre-populated combinations that Kawhi really likes. But they're very easy to edit. And this brings me to another point, which is uh, something uh, that Roland made a particularly big deal of when they were bringing out the new Phantom series, this, this modeless concept that the keyboard no matter what you're doing is always looking at the same parameters is treating uh, all of the controls from uh, uh, as though it were um, you know in the same uh, yeah in the same environment at all times and on here you're always in this setup mode even when you're on sound this concept that there are four slots that you can fill up and they name these main uh, sub one sub two and sub three uh, the only reason that, that you might call them sub 1, sub 2, sub 3 is that they don't have access to the same uh, effects number 1 and effects number 2 engine and the amplifier simulator, the amp simulator, only applies to the main. But you still have independent reverb control and effects control on all four uh, slots or, or sounds. And you've got the ability to mix them right here. Uh, you also have the ability to change them from internal to external, which is a very standard stage piano feature. Every single one of uh, stage pianos out there has done this since the beginning of time. Uh, so that isn't particularly unusual, but it is certainly handy and makes this a pretty potent uh, option. Um, so you've got your effects engine, you've got there, and you've got these uh, beautiful sound setups uh, with lots of parameters that you can get in there and play with. Uh, and on the piano sound, particularly, this is going to include the virtual technician settings. You can get in and really customize your own piano. Um, so we're going to leave it at that for now. Uh, move on to our second section where we're going to talk about the action. So thank you so much for being with us so far. We'll be back in just a moment. So this brings us to action. The MP7SE has the RH3 action. This is a good action. Um, I would say in different settings, I like the RH3 sometimes as much as I like the PHA50 from uh, Roland. And that's saying something because I'm a big fan of the PHA50. And in more settings than not, I think I might actually prefer it over the PHA4. Uh, from Roland. And I definitely prefer it over Korg's RH3, which is is completely coincidental that it's named the same. This is a very responsive action. It's weighted well, uh, and it wears well. Uh, Nord actually picked this action up and put it in their new Nord Grand as well. This is the exact same action that's in there. So when you consider what it compares very well against, and then you consider the price point of the MP7 SE, this is still a really competitive product. You know, it's 50% cheaper than the RD2000. And it is, uh, depending on your market, I guess it's going to be somewhere in the $500 to $1,000 more than, say, the Roland RD88, which I would say somewhat uh, competes with this. Uh, for the same type of an audience, but not really. You know, this is this is definitely a little beefier than the RD88. Certainly, in terms of construction, I mean, it's they've they've made this a tank. I mean, that can be a bad thing for some people, a good thing for others. It depends on your use case. 
Um, I've never been uh, one to really particularly harp on, you know, um, how heavy or how solid a case is, but for people who are moving it around a lot uh, for road crews and things like that, I mean, this can be a big benefit to have something that's, that's this rigid. Um, but yeah, RH3. What you get with the RH3 is a triple sensor. You also get a nice micro texture on both the black and the white key. You get escapement uh, as well, but it's a very well padded action. It's quiet. If I kill this volume, That's definitely not the loudest action I've ever played. And the bottom of the key bed is a little more cushioned than what you get on any of the Rollins. The cushioning also uh, resembles, I think, what you get on the Yamaha, so uh, it's not too surprising the two acoustic piano companies building the instruments really want to focus on the bottom of the key bed. Um, but what I like about the Kawai is that they aren't having to load the key up with a lot of weight to simulate the proper you know, dynamic resistance of the key. It's just a very natural, effortless playing experience to play on this action. They're also really well rounded. So, you know, we've talked about the RH3 and other uh, reviews before because this is what you're going to find on Kawhi CN29, CN39. You're going to find it on their newer ES models as well uh, before you get into the wooden actions that are on the CA or its big brother here, the MP11 SE. We're going to move on to one last section where we're going to talk more about the technical functionality that it offers, such as the recorder or some of the other. Uh, you know, uh, effects or control surfaces that it has here. But thank you so much uh, for being with us for today's review. We'll be back in just a second. So let's get into some of the less musical, more techie type of stuff. No Bluetooth of any kind here. So everything that you're going to connect in and out of this instrument is going to be wired. It's the way it is. Uh, so you've got USB in and out for MIDI. It does not have an onboard USB audio interface, which is becoming a little more prominent or prevalent, I should say, uh, on the 2021 releases from various companies. Not uh, completely ubiquitous, but it's, it's becoming a bit of a you know, standard feature. You don't have that on this, but what you do have is quarter inch stereo inputs. Meaning if you've got a second instrument uh, on stage with you, you want to use this to uh, consolidate audio signal, you've got that and you've got a nice uh, you know, tactile fader to manage your line in sound. Um, there's going to be some people who find that incredibly useful, especially if you've got some other uh, vintage instruments that aren't digital, you know, analog instruments only you have on stage, and you want to be able to, uh, you know, manage that tone uh, yourself without having to reach for another mixer before sending it off uh, to a main mixer. This is very handy. You've also got, uh, as you might have guessed, stereo quarter inch outputs. 
You've got lots of foot controller options. You've got a foot switch, you've got expression. You even have the option of switching the expression type. Uh, some instruments have that as a hardware switch. Some of them, it's a, um, you know, a switch within the settings. So certainly this. They also make uh, a triple pedal, which is called uh, the GFP3, I believe. Uh, it, that is also compatible with the MP7SE. This has got an onboard recorder. You can dump um, audio straight out of here, uh, so you don't have to save it exclusively as a MIDI file. Um, and the recorder is uh, fairly robust for something that is on board. I still generally prefer to do most of my recording in some sort of a DAW. Uh, I mean, the f flexibility and just the freedom you have to move around a big screen when you're recording is great, but for people who don't have that, or really just prefer to have something on board, you're not going to be too disappointed. It's got like A, B loop points that you can set for it. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty well, pretty well featured for a stage piano uh, recording device. Uh, you've got four assignable uh, knobs uh, to the right here. Well, are they assignable? In a sense, not really. Um, these four knobs uh, manage the four parameters that are on the screen at any given time. Uh, it is fairly easy to get to all of those screens. So, I mean, Kawhi does make pretty efficient use of the screen. Um, I would love this to have a, a screen about twice the size because it would minimize the amount of jumping around you'd have to do to access some of those parameters. In a live setting, you really have to know this board well uh, in order to have the full range of control that you might want to have when you're in uh, a gig, you know, when you're on a live stage. Um, but it doesn't take that long to learn. You just kind of figure out where all of these different settings are that you want. And double hitting the F1234 key uh, gets you to those different uh, menus, uh, which is handy. Uh, the other thing is almost, in, in almost all cases, just pressing and holding whatever key it is you're on on the MP7 will access the menu behind that function. So if you want the amp simulator, uh, press it once on, press it again, it's off. If you want to figure out uh, what uh, settings there are, just press it and hold it. And there you are. Now you're into the amp. Same thing with effects one or effects two. Press and hold, now you're in uh, or off. Uh, same thing with your zone control. That's going to allow you to, to change your key ranges very, very simply. Your assignables uh, you can get into in your system settings, uh, so you can uh, set those up uh, per setup. Um, and then your pitch bend and modulation are pretty self-explanatory. For its price, and still for what it offers in terms of an organ sim, acoustic piano uh, offering, and the action, this instrument is still incredibly relevant. Uh, it, it nestles in to a range where it's going to compete really with Yamaha CP series, I would say, is probably its biggest competitor in terms of its offering for price. And from an action standpoint and from an acoustic standpoint, um, you know, if you like what the Kawhi has to offer, you're going to love the value. Uh, that it brings here. It always comes down to personal preference, uh, so this isn't going to be everybody's stage piano, uh, but for people tuning into this video in 2021 thinking, ah, it's been out for a few years, it, should I even look at it? Should I even consider it? Oh yeah, yeah, this still holds its own against many products, uh, even some of the newer ones coming out, uh, you know, this year. So I think Kawhi's done a really phenomenal job on this. I can't believe it took us this long to actually realize we hadn't done a review. Um, so for people who are waiting for one, thanks for your patience. This has been another piano review here at Miriam Pianos on YouTube. If it's the first time that you've seen us here on YouTube, we would really, really love for you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can come back and see reviews in the future. Thank you so much. Have yourselves a great day. My name is Stu Harrison. We'll see you again soon.